Hello my lovelies! It is time for another book haul, so stay tuned. So this month I managed to accumulate only 12 books, so pat on the back to me for not going too crazy. These first five actually were books that I acquired on my last trip, so they would have been uh, maybe a couple of months ago. However, I just received them because of <laughs> baggage issues. Uh, but the first one I have here is The Messy Lives of Book People by Phaedra Patrick. Now this is not one I don't think I'd ever heard of, but when I saw it at, I think it was Indigo I believe, uh, it just, it really intrigued me. And uh, here's what it says. Mother of two, Liv Green, barely scrapes by as a maid to make ends meet, often finding escape in a good book while de daydreaming of becoming a writer herself. So she can't believe her luck when she lands a job housekeeping for her personal hero, mega best-selling author Essie Starling, a mysterious and intimidating recluse. The last thing Liv expected was to be the only person Essie talks to, which leads to a tenuous friendship. When Essie passes away suddenly, Liv is astonished to learn that her dying wish was for Liv to complete her final novel. But to do so, Liv will have to step into Essie's shoes. As Liv begins to write, she uncovers secrets from the past that reveal a surprising connection between the two women, one that will change Liv's story forever. Now, reading that kind of gave me uh, a little bit of The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo kind of vibes. Um, and there's another book, I can't remember which one, but that I haven't read. I think it was like Colleen Hoover book, I believe, that this made me think of. But I'm really excited for this. I love me a bookish book too, so yay. Uh, this was one that I got at a thrift store there, and it is The Narcissist You Know, Defending Yourself Against Extreme Narcissists in an All About Me Age by Joseph Burgo, P.D. And this one says, A startling 10% of Americans are considered extreme narcissists, individuals whose self-regard has actually become a threat to themselves and to those around them. And these extreme narcissists aren't just annoying, they can be downright dangerous if you don't have the knowledge and the tools to defend yourself. Psychologist Joseph Burgo explains that narcissism actually exists on a spectrum, much like autism or other neurological disorders while only a fraction of these extreme narcissists are clinically diagnosed with the most serious label of narcissistic personality disorder. They can still disrupt our lives and make our homes and workplaces unbearable. The good news, once you understand the personality characteristics of different types of extreme narcissists, you will be better able to coexist with them. Weaving together case studies and celebrity profiles of some of the most outrageous narcissistic behavior Dr. Burgo illustrates how to recognize the narcissist you know and offers life-saving advice on deflecting and diffusing such behavior. Extreme narcissists, he said, should not, be should not be vilified and never ever underestimated or ignored. Next up, uh, this was, I think this was another one I got in a thrift store. They were like a dollar or something like that for the paperbacks or for the YA paperbacks. So I got With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. I've heard nothing but amazing things about this, so I wanted to pick it up. This says, Imani wants to be a chef more than anything, but having a two-year-old daughter and being 17 and still at school isn't exactly making life easy. One place she can let everything go is in the kitchen, where she has magical hands, whipping up extraordinary food beloved by everyone from her grandmother to her best friend, Angelica. Imani knows, though, that there are rules she has to play by, and yet, once she gets cooking, her passion to feed will nourish her soul and dreams, too. With the fire on high, anything is possible. And then, this is one I think I also picked this one up from Indigo, I believe. And that is The Near Witch by V.E. Schwab with a bonus story and introduction by the author. I absolutely adore everything that I read from V.E. Schwab, so I was happy to pick this up and I love this paperback edition. Uh, this says, The Near Witch is only an old story told to frighten children. If the wind calls at night, you must not listen. 
The wind is lonely and always looking for company. There are no strangers in the town of Nier. These are the truths that Lexi has heard all her life, but when an actual stranger, a boy who seems to fade like smoke, appears outside her home on the moor at night, she knows at le that at least one of these sayings is no longer true. The next night, the children of Nier start disappearing from their beds, and the mysterious boy falls under suspicion. As the hunt for the children intensifies, so does Lexi's need to know about the witch that just might be more than a bedtime story, and about the history of this nameless boy. Next up, we have Jagged Little Pill, the novel, based on the Tony and Grammy Award winning musical. This is uh, Eric Smith with Alanis Morissette, Diablo Cody, and Glenn Ballard. Now, if you saw another haul I did a while back, I had this other uh, one that says Jagged Little Pill, but it's not the novel. It was sort of a behind the scenes kind of thing of the musical. And so when I saw this, I was like, Ooh, this is the actual novel of what's in the play. And, uh, yeah. I forgot I had some postcards in here that I have for somebody. <laughs> Let's see. This says, After the events at a party, five teens' lives will never be the same. A timely and gutsy YA novel based on the Tony and Grammy award-winning musical from Alanis Morissette, Diablo Cody, and Glenn Ballard. Frankie wants justice, Joe wants to be seen, Nick wants to be good, Venus, Phoenix wants connection, Bella wants to be believed. Moving, heartfelt, and raw, Jagged Little Pill, the novel, draws on the musical story and gives reader deeper glimpses of the characters. It's a story about the power of voicing your pain, standing up for what's right, and finding healing and connection. And the Jagged Little Pill album was like my anthem as a teenager, so... I love this. Okay, next up. This is a book that I actually ordered from, I believe it was from Book Depository, I think. Um, it was this, I don't even remember if it was Book Depository or not, but it was this absolutely stunning special edition of Lady Midnight by Cassandra Clare. And oh my gosh, isn't this just so freaking pretty. Here's what the end pages look like. I just, I love it. Sorry if y'all can hear some weird sounds going on in the background. Um, Einstein's chewing on a bow. <laughs> so if you don't know, Lady Midnight is the first book in the Dark Artifices series, uh, which I've read a few times. Uh, this is the anniversary edition with bonus story and a letter from Cassandra Clare. And uh, I can't actually read you the synopsis because I don't think it would spoil anything for any of the others. Because, like, this is the first in this particular series, though there are several other Shadowhunter series that come before this. Anyway, this says, Discover the breathtaking world of the Shadowhunters. Parabatai was more than friendship, more than family. It was a bond that tied you together fiercely. In a secret world where half-angel warriors are sworn to fight demons, Parabatai are partners in battle, best friends. Parabatai can be everything to each other, but they can never fall in love. Emma Carstairs is a warrior, a shadow hunter, alongside her Parabatai, Julian Blackthorne. She patrols Los Angeles where vampires party and fairies, the most powerful of supernatural creatures, teeter on the edge of war with shadow hunters. When the bodies of humans and fairies are found murdered in the same way Emma's parents were when she was a child, an uneasy alliance is formed. They must solve the murders before the murderer targets them. Each clue Emma unravels uncovers more secrets. What has Julian been hiding from her all these years? Why does Shadowhunter Law forbid Parabatai to fall in love? Who really killed her parents? And can she bear to know the truth? And I just, I love everything by Cassandra Clare, so... I have so many uh, editions of these books, of all of her books. Okay, next up I have Better Than the Movies by Lynn Painter. And this says, Liz Buxom has always known that Wes Bennett was not boyfriend material. You would think that her next door neighbor would be a prime candidate for her romantic comedy fantasies, but Wes has only proven himself to be a pain in the butt ever since they were little. 
Wes was the kid who put a frog in her Barbie dream house, the monster who hid a lawn gnome's severed head in her little homemade neighborhood book exchange. Flash forward 10 years from the great gnome decapitation, it's Liz's senior year, a time meant to be rife with milestones perfect for any big screen, and she needs Wes's help. See, Liz's forever crush, Michael, has just moved back to town and horribly, annoyingly, he's hitting it off with Wes. Meaning that if Liz wants Michael to finally notice her and hopefully be her prom date, she needs Wes. He's her in. But as Liz and Wes scheme to get Liz her magical prom moment, she's shocked to discover that she actually likes being around Wes. And as they continue to grow closer, she must re-examine everything she thought she knew about love and rethink her own perception of what happily ever after should really look like. And it's all so cute. Okay, next up is a sequel. This is Flash Fire by TJ Klune. Uh, Extraordinaries, or The Extraordinaries, is the first book. And uh, I've pulled it up here on Goodreads so I can tell you about it. Some people are extraordinary, some are just extra. TJ Klune's YA debut, The Extraordinaries, is a queer coming of age story about a fanboy with ADHD and the heroes he loves. Nick Bell, not extraordinary. But being the most popular fan fiction writer in the Extraordinaries fandom is a superpower, right? After a chance encounter with Shadowstar, Nova City's mightiest hero and Nick's biggest crush, Nick sets out to make himself extraordinary. And he'll do it with or without the reluctant help of Seth Gray, Nick's best friend and maybe the love of his life. Rainbow Rowell's fangirl meets Marissa Meyer's Renegades in TJ Klune's YA debut. It was so much fun. It had quite the cliffhanger at the end and I loved it. <laughs> uh, and because I had the paperback for The Extraordinaries, I wanted to wait and get this paperback of Flash Fire. So I had the, the matching ones. Okay, next up is Finley Donovan is Killing It by Ellie Casamano. And Kayla from Books and Lala just raves about this book. So I had to give it a shot. It looks cute and yeah, everybody seems to love it. This says, it's murder being a hit mom. Finley Donovan is killing it, except she's really not. As a stressed out single mom of two and struggling novelist, Finley finds her life in chaos. When Finley is overheard discussing the plot of her new suspense novel with her agent over lunch, she's mistaken for a contract killer and inadvertently accepts an offer to dispose of a problem husband. Finley soon discovers that crime in real life is a lot more difficult than its fictional counterpart as she becomes tangled in a murder investigation. Fast paced, deliciously witty, and wholeheartedly authentic in depicting the frustrations and triumphs of motherhood, Finley Donovan is Killing It is the first in a brilliant new series from award winning author Ellie Casamano. And I'm looking forward to reading this. Uh, as much, as many good things as I've heard about this, I've got to give it a shot. Okay, next up is. Layla by Colleen Hoover. I believe I've heard some mixed reviews on this one. Uh, but this says, love can haunt or heal. When Leeds meets Layla, he's convinced he'll spend the rest of his life with her until an unexpected attack leaves Layla fighting for her life. After weeks in the hospital, Layla recovers physically, but the emotional and mental scarring has altered the woman Leeds fell in love with. In order to put the relationship back on track, Leeds whisks Layla away to the bed and breakfast where they first met. Once they arrive, Layla's behavior takes a bizarre turn, and that's just one of many inexplicable occurrences. Feeling, distance from, feeling distant from Layla, Leeds soon finds solace in Willow, another guest of the B&B with whom he forms a connection through their shared concerns. As his curiosity for Willow grows, his decision to help her find answers puts him in direct conflict with Layla's well-being. Leeds soon realizes that he has to make a choice because he can't help both of them. But if he makes the wrong choice, it could be detrimental for all of them. So I'm very intrigued by that one. Okay, next up is a book that I have read and absolutely loved. Uh, but I want, and I've read several books in this series. I can't remember exactly how many, but uh, I want to own the series and I want to reread the whole series because there's still books coming out in this series and I'm excited for it. That is Dark Fever by Karen Marie Moaning. Or Mooning. 
this says with her new york times bestseller spell of the highlander karen marie mooning brought a world of ancient magic and timeless love to life now mooning embarks on a fantastic new series about a woman drawn into a sensual sensual otherworldly realm only to be caught up in the in a mystery as terrifying as it is seductive dark fever Michaela Lane's life is good. She has great friends, a decent job, and a car that breaks down only every other week or so. In other words, she's your perfectly ordinary 21st century woman. Or so she thinks, until something extraordinary happens. When her sister is murdered, leaving a single clue to her death, a cryptic message on Mac's cell phone, Mac journeys to Ireland in search of answers. The quest to find her sister's killer draws her into a shadow realm where nothing is as it seems where good and evil wear the same treacherously seductive mask. She is soon faced with an even greater challenge, staying alive long enough to learn how to handle a power she had no idea she possessed, a gift that allows her to see beyond the world of man into the dangerous realm of the Fae. As Mac delves deeper into the mystery of her sister's death, her every move is shadowed by the dark, mysterious Jericho, a man with no past and only mockery for a future. As she begins to close in on the truth, the ruthless flame... Blaine, an alpha fae who makes sex an addiction for human women, closes in on her. And as the boundary between worlds begin to crumble, Mac's true mission becomes clear. Find the elusive Sinzar Dub before someone else claims the all-powerful Dark Book. Because whoever gets to it first holds nothing less than complete control of the very fabric of both worlds in their hands. That tells you all way too much, I think, um, but... This series is amazing. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. Okay, next up is another sequel. I have not read the first one of these, but I have heard amazing things. Everybody just raves about at least this first book. Uh, and on Goodreads, it has 54,245 ratings with a 4.39. <laughs> so the book I have here is Lore Olympus Volume 2. This is the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition. And it is a like Hades and Persephone retelling. And I'm super excited for it. I don't know if Volume 2 is Hades and Persephone or not. I think it continues the story. Uh, but let me read you about Volume 1. It says, experience the propulsive love story of two Greek gods, Hades and Persephone, brought to life with lavish artwork and irresistible contemporary voice. Scandalous gossip, wild parties, and forbidden love. Witness what the gods go do after dark in this stylish and contemporary reimagining of one of mythology's most well-known stories from creator Rachel Smythe. Featuring a brand new exclusive short story, Smythe's Original Eisner nominated webcomic Lore Olympus brings the Greek pantheon into the modern age with this sharply perceptive and romantic graphic novel. So, yeah, I got book two or volume two. So, those are all 12 books that I managed to uh, accumulate in this month. Have you guys read any of them? Did you like them? Did you not? Comment down below and let me know. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, click that subscribe button down below. And until next time, remember to always be completely you. Bye!